Hello, everybody. I want to thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today, we are going to continue another lesson in Jason's Virtual Weather School. And today, we're going to be talking about tornadoes. But first, as always, we'd like to be for the day, and it involves bees. So here's my question, weather enthusiast. Can bees fly in the rain? Hmm. All right. Here goes the answer. So can bees fly in the rain? Well, not without their yellow jackets. Get it? You need a jacket in order to be in the rain. All right, I can hear all of you laughing. World. All right, so as always, I love your weather questions. You can continue to send them my way. You can tag me right here on social media, or you can email me directly at jfrazer at wkyc.com, and I will get right back to you with your weather question. So let's get started with what we're going to be talking about today. Today, we're going to be discussing what exactly is a tornado and how do they form? And then we're going to actually create our own tornado. I'm looking forward to that. And then we're going to talk a little bit about tornado safety. Are you ready? All right. All right. Let's get started. So first things first, what exactly are tornadoes? Well, tornadoes are nothing more than a very fast moving, rotating column of air that moves very, 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 very fast. I mean, when I say fast, I'm talking 100 miles an hour or more. Now, one of the things that most people think of when they think of tornadoes are the little funnel clouds, right? They kind of come down out of the cloud just like this, and then they touch the ground, all right? Now, here's something I do want to point out. Until that funnel cloud actually touches the ground, it is not considered a tornado. It is only considered a tornado once that funnel cloud touches the ground. So that brings up another question of how and why do they form? And how exactly does a tornado decide where it's going to hit? Well, the short answer of this is, we really don't know. There's a lot of research going on right now with trying to figure out the science behind tornadoes. We do know that the majority of tornadoes do happen in thunderstorms. And within thunderstorms, you have several things going on. You have what we call updrafts, and then you have what we call wind shear. Updrafts are basically really, really strong winds that are moving upward. So let's say this is the column of air we're gonna have air pushing all the way upward really, 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 really fast. Now, with wind shear, wind shear is basically a change in direction and speed of wind. So at the ground, you can have warmer air that's maybe just chilling there on the ground. It's just, you know, not really doing anything. But as you move upwards, you'll notice that not only the temperature of that wind changes, but also the direction. So that's a couple of theories behind tornadoes. But again, we still don't really know what tornadoes. Now, here are a couple of cool facts, though, about tornadoes. Here in the United States, there are, on average, anywhere between 1,200 and about 1,300 of them. Somewhere between 12 and about 1,400 of them occur every year. And tornadoes can happen anywhere at any time. There's a lot of people that think tornadoes can only happen in one particular place, but no, in actuality, under the right conditions, you can get a tornado anywhere. And the most dangerous tornadoes actually happen at night. Anybody know why? Well, the reason why is because usually the nighttime tornadoes, you can't see them. You can only see either the electricity or something else that's happening as a result around it. So, and usually what will happen is, let's say this is a tornado, what will happen is it'll be moving and moving, but it'll be really dark, but then you'll see some sort of electrical line go this way, and then there's an explosion, or sometimes you can even see fires as a result of it. So, that is why we always get really, really concerned about tornadoes that happen at night. So as I said, tornadoes can happen anywhere across the world. We can see them in Asia, we see them in Europe, we also see them in South America, places like Argentina, Uruguay, Paraguay. And across Asia, we can also see them in places like Bangladesh or India as well. 
Now, when you're talking about tornadoes, the most tornadoes that actually happen are right here in the United States in a place that we call Tornado Alley. That's generally where we see the most tornadoes, even though we can see them across the South, like in places like Mississippi and Alabama and even South Georgia and South Carolina. There have even been cases where we've seen tornadoes pop up in New York or in Connecticut or even in places like Boston. But Southern Plains states between May and June tend to see the most thunder, or I should say tornadoes uh, during the springtime. And then the Northern Plains states or parts of the Midwest, like so states like South Dakota can see them between June and July and places like Oklahoma usually tend to see them between May and June. But again, we can see them at any time of year. All right, so how do we differentiate between one tornado versus another? Well, the National Weather Service is a team that goes out there and evaluates one tornado from another tornado. Now, each tornado doesn't have a specific name. We usually will name the tornado or refer to the tornado based on where it hit and the system that you see in front of you called the Enhanced Fujita Scale. A lot of times you'll actually hear a tornado referred to as an EF0 or an EF3 or an EF5. It's based on its wind speed and the damage that that tornado did. Now an EF0, that is the smallest tornado. All right, that tornado has wind speeds that range anywhere between 65 and about 85 miles per hour. And usually with that wind, there's not really much damage that it does. The damage is very small. Maybe you might have a couple of downed trees. Maybe you might have some roofs that may have some damage, but sometimes you'll get really big, powerful tornadoes that are EF5 tornadoes. And those are tornadoes that have winds of up to two hundred miles per hour. Can you imagine that? 200 miles per hour. It just comes through communities and just whoosh. And usually with tornadoes that powerful, it usually will have wiped out the entire neighborhood. Um, there's usually a lot of injuries and a lot of damage to buildings. Now, we don't get that many EF5 tornadoes. We usually will get tornadoes between EF0s, EF1s, and EF2s. Uh, but it is possible to get an EF5. Now, I have seen rumors online about an EF6 tornado. EF6 tornadoes do not exist. Now, one of the things I do want you to do is take a look at the scale on your screen, and you'll notice that, be that the winds are correlate to every single category. So if the winds were between 65 and 85 miles per hour, that means it was an EF0. If they were between 86 to 110, that means it was an EF1. If it was an EF2, that means it had winds anywhere between 111 to 135 miles per hour. And that also means that it likely did a lot of damage to roofs as well as foundations and mobile homes. If it was an EF3, that means it had winds anywhere between 136 to 165 miles per hour. And if it was an EF4, then that means it had winds anywhere between 166 to 200 miles per hour. And again, it's the National Weather Service that goes out usually either a couple of hours or the next day and looks at all of the damage to try and figure out how big and how powerful that tornado was. So here comes my favorite part about this lesson, which is making a tornado. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. All right, so basically all you need is a jar or a bottle, a cover, and either some dish soap or some glitter, all right? So what you're going to do is you're gonna take off the top. So I just use one of these little Parmesan shakers, all right, for this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a little bit of Dawn dish soap. I'm gonna pour it in here and you'll notice it right there. Some of the blue is popping up towards the bottom, all right? Now, cool part about this is I'm gonna make sure to snap this on because we're gonna actually create a mess. And remember I had talked about how the winds are very violent and they're shaking, right? So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your hand and you're gonna make sure that it stands on top, that it stays on top, I should say, and you're gonna make sure that the bottle goes in a very circular position. And then one of the things you're gonna notice at the end, look at that, we have a tornado right there. Uh-oh, 
think my little thing is leaking here. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> uh, whatever you do, don't tell my wife. All right, so as I try to clean up the mess that I just left here. All right, let's talk about water spouts. So water spouts are tornadoes that happen over water. They do not happen over land, but they can still cause a lot of damage. So they can cause large waves, high winds. They can also include some lightning as well as some hail. Now, usually they go, or I should say they dissipate right before they hit land, but not always. We have had cases where water spouts have moved over land and then become tornadoes and then gone back over to water and then become, yeah. The other thing that some of you have actually seen in movies is something called a fire tornado or a fire nado. All right, now this actually does happen in real life. It usually happens around wildfires. It's usually caused by wind shear and a lot of rising air. Remember what I said what wind shear was? A change in direction of wind as well as a change in how quickly that wind is moving. Now, if ever you see a fire nado, do not even try and put it out. Just run in the opposite direction and you just have to wait until the wind dies. So let's talk a little bit about how to prepare for a tornado. Now, most of you either have cell phones or your parents have cell phones. So when a tornado watch or warning is issued, you're likely going to get some sort of alert on your phone. Now, if you're a really young, young child, it's going to actually happen with your parents. Uh, shameless plug here. Uh, you should be uh, you should have the WKYC app. We automatically will send tornado watches or warnings straight to your phone. So do you remember what the difference between a watch and a warning is? Well, all right. Well, a tornado watch means that a tornado could happen sometime either over the next 24 or 48 hours. Those watches are issued by the Storm Prediction Center. A warning basically means that we saw something either on the radar that indicates a tornado has touched down is impacting either your neighborhood or somebody else's neighborhood, or we saw something either on a camera or somewhere else that indicates that a tornado is imminent. Now, those tornado warnings are always issued by our local National Weather Service office. They do not come from any news organization. We're just the ones that broadcast those watches. So let's talk a little bit about tornado safety. If for some reason you see a tornado or there's a tornado warning that's issued for your area, you and your parents need to make sure that you have a way of getting that information. Again, shameless plug for the WKYC app, make sure that you download it, or you can go to your either local town or maybe your local uh, municipality. They usually will have an emergency alert that you should be running. The other thing that I don't want you to do is do not stay outside. There are a lot of people that love to do this. Oh, wow, look at that tornado. And they like to stand there and record it. That is not what I want you to do. Why? Because usually when tornadoes are rotating, remember I talked about how it was, it was a violent uh, amount of air, right? And it was circulating very, very, very quickly. Well, usually what happens around that is you get debris and other things. So like trees and sometimes if the tornado is powerful enough, you can even get vehicles and all that stuff gets lobbed everywhere. And if you're outside, what's going to happen to you? Yeah, some of that debris may potentially end up hitting you and you could get injured. Now, once you're indoors, stay away from any windows and garages, okay? One of the most dangerous places inside your home is by a window. And you might be wondering why. Well, if some of that debris is chucked right into your house, usually, usually it's going to hit a window. And then once it hits the window, what happens? All that glass goes everywhere. And then you get hurt. And we don't want you to get hurt. The other thing that you should do is, if you can, put on your bike helmet or maybe put on one of those football helmets just to protect your head. A lot of times during tornadoes, one of the top injuries that people have are head injuries. And the reason why is because again, those pieces of debris will hit you in the head. And if you don't have a helmet, make sure that you go under a table and hide out just until the threat over. Whatever you do, 
Do not ever stay inside of your car or under a highway overpass. That is the absolute worst place to be during a tornado. All right, so I hope that you have learned something about tornadoes and how they form and where they usually strike. We're gonna go on a couple of days of vacation and we will be back here on Monday, April 6th. We're gonna change the time a little bit. We're gonna move it up slightly to about 9 a.m. And we are gonna be talking about hurricanes, what causes hurricanes, and how to remain safe during those. As always, if you have questions, comments, concerns, maybe some short speeches, long speeches, you can hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Snapchat, at Jason Fraser TV. I'm even on TikTok now, too, even though I still don't know how to use it, but that's a whole nother story. You can also email me at jfraser at wkyc.com. And one last thing, if you are on Facebook and you're seeing this video premiere, it will be reposted here within the next five minutes. So you can stop the video and go back as soon as the video publishes. The other thing is we've put a link to not only this lesson, but also the handout on WKYC.com. So you can make sure to get all of the information there. All right, so again, hurricanes, why they form and how to remain safe, that is going to be on Monday. See you then.